Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to another edition of NS9 Live. I, of course, am your host, Anthony DiNardo. With me this week, we have ourselves, I guess, Noah Hiles. Noah, take two. What's up, my man? Hey, man. I'm just glad to be here, literally, because it took forever. I had a Did long day of uh, multiple jobs, was and then I had to hurry here up home. I thought about doing this on my desktop, then didn't know if my webcam would work on that, so I used my laptop, and then just as we were about to start, my laptop just starts updating. So now, third tries the charm, pulled out the old iPad, should have just went with uh, Steve, uh, Steve Jobs' genius idea, his last gift to us all before he went to uh, the afterlife. Should have just started with that to begin with, but I mean, nonetheless, not, happy to be here. How do you not just go with Apple? Come on, man. Well, that's the thing. So my girlfriend gives me a lot of a lot of crap for that because last year, you want to hear how petty I am, Donardo. Um, last year, the, on opening day, when I was shadowing uh, for my position that I have now with the uh, with ninety three seven the fan, I was looking and the guy I was shadowing, his name's Matt Harkins. He has the same position as me. Um, we use these company laptops, right? And I was watching him do the job on his company laptop, and there's, like, free chips and pretzels in the in the press lounge. Nice. And the dude eats so many of the chips. The whole keypad was so greasy from all the potato chips on his fingers. The day after, I went to Best Buy and bought a brand new laptop. But, like, I wasn't really budgeted for it, so I didn't get, like, a MacBook, which I totally should have. I should have just got, like, the you know, like the Best Buy credit card and got like a really good one, but I got like a decent one. It's just my work laptop that I only use for work. Pretty much everything else I just do on my iPad. Uh, but yeah, I, I should have went Mac. I should have went Mac and it's one of my bigger regrets in life. It's for being a, honest. I mean, I mean, it's all right. You know, we'll all get it right eventually one day in this world, by the way, absolutely. Smitty says Noah Hiles is my idol. So there you go. It doesn't even matter. Doesn't uh, even I matter. try Smitty. I try. <laughs> So why don't you go ahead and introduce our, yourself a little bit. Tell us all about you, what you do, where we can find you at. All right. So um, on March 16th, 1995, greatness was created at approximately 12.04 a.m. at Carlisle Hospital. Uh, 12.04. Yeah, that's right. I was born 36 hours of labor. Shout out to Jenny Hiles. She did it. Um, she made it all happen. I owe her everything. No, but um, so I am uh, I'm a man of many, many jobs, a lot of different responsibilities. I graduated from the University of Mount Union, a small division three school with a really freaking good football team. Right. Highly recommend checking them out. Only missed the national championship game five times since 1993. I got a lot of experience there doing play by play, doing sports talk and everything. Mm. I grew up in the Pittsburgh area, so I wanted to work here. I originally had a job lined up at, out of college. It kind of fell through. Um, so I moved back here, and I got my first job starting with KDK Radio as a part-time producer. Then I started writing for the Beaver County Times. And uh, between my producing skills and my writing skills, I was offered the job to be the producer slash reporter for the Pirates pregame show on 93.7 The Fan. That's where I kind of got that. They said, we want you to write a lot for the website, brand new website for the fan. They thought, let's get a young writer in so I could be like a reporter. And I knew how to produce the show. So that's where I really got my you know foot in the door as far as Pirates Media was concerned. Um, that's where I got like a lot of a following, I guess, known as, you know, a pirates guy. And that's where I met Alex, my co-host for the river blast podcast. Since then, you know, I've, you know, continue to find jobs. I call games for the trib a little bit. I even write for them from time to time. I have another podcast called underpaid and overrated. I write for some blogs here and there. I do a little bit of everything legitimately, but I just kind of round it up. I, I like the term multimedia journalist. And I'm a typical millennial, even though I don't think I'm a millennial because I was born in 95. But I'm a freelancer, just just grinding, grinding Donardo to try to one day reach the top. Well, try to be I want I want someone to make shirts about me <laughs> that say Noah thinks this shirt is is white and it's a black shirt. So that's the dream right there. Well, well there it is. And it's not just shut us down. You just you just topple the show right there. Why are we even here? No, for real. I really appreciate it. And then lastly, where can everyone find you at if they don't know? 
Um, well, I'm not going to give you my address because, you know, I not to brag, but no, don't I worry, have I got a 40-inch TV in my living room, so I'm doing pretty well for myself. No, um, you can find me on Twitter at Noah underscore Hiles 95, on Instagram, Noah Hiles 9. Um, that's basically it. If you want to friend me on Facebook, um, sure, I guess. I mean, you're just going <laughs> to see my, my girlfriend and sister graduate college this weekend. You might see pictures of me there. I don't really post anything else on that app. So congrats. Yeah, that's where you can find me. And if you can find if in a real sense, if you're ever at a Pirates home game, you can find me on Federal Street before the game. I would love to meet up with you guys and uh, just talk baseball. That's where we do the pregame show. Starts at 5.40 at all the games that uh, we go on the air at 5.40 for all the 7 o'clock games. So nice. I'll be there for the most of the weekend games. Nice, nice. Well, I'll be up there yeah. on June 1st. So uh, I'm, working, I'm working that day, so I'll, we're going to have to meet up. All right, well, definitely will. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, so definitely thanks for coming on. We are definitely going to talk some Pirates today. Uh, let's go ahead and kick this off. First off, I think the bigger news is, I mean, Jameson Tyon goes to the 60-day DL. Mm -hmm. that's not very favorable. So no. Archer did come back. Not that he played really well, but he is back. So obviously we've had Kingham brought in the rotation at this point in time. Um, let's play a little game in this sense. I mean, I don't want this to come off on what do you think Neil Huntington is going to do? But if, if you were GM, let's put your GM hat. Actually right here, this guy, this guy on the screen. Say this man is your GM. Oh, <laughs> buddy. What is uh this guy... What are your plans? How are you going to ride this out with the loss of Tyone? Um, without Tyone, I, I mean, first first things first, I wouldn't have had Archer start. I know that, I mean, props to Archer. He's a good teammate. He recognized that, I mean, he, he recognizes what's going on here. You don't think he sees what Glasnow was doing and what Meadows is doing in Tampa Bay. He wants to hold up his end of the bargain. That's why he took the mound the other day. And, he clearly was rushed back. He thought, you know, I'll be able to do this. It was like irrational confidence. It kind of came off looking like Carlton shooting from half court in the Fresh <laughs> Prince of Bel Air there at the end. He oh, needed a rehab right start. Now. So that would have been that would have been my first move. It would have been listen, we appreciate the effort, Chris. We know we know we need we know we need you, but we need you to be you. We don't need you to be Stephen Brault. We've already got one of those. All right. So I would have that would have been my first move. I would have made him do a rehab start. He would have had to miss another time through the rotation. But it is what it is. That's just the reality of the situation. Um, second off, yeah, I think the the main thing that I would do is I'd give Brault probably one more chance because I was impressed with what he did, not in his last time out, but his first time out. You know, four I, innings. Absolutely, I agree with that, 100%. He was pretty efficient, like 62 pitches, I think it was. And, I mean, they pinch hit for him. Uh, with Melky, and Melky ended up, you know, hitting in. I think the game-winning run. So I mean, it was a good, it was a good call at the time. And uh, even I probably still would have hit for him regardless, just because he wasn't stretched out. But I want to give Brault one more shot. Kingham, I'm done with that. I think next time he would come up, I think you give Liriano a shot, and you just say one, one time through, one time through. If that's if that's three up, three down for the first three innings, that's great. If it's two innings, that's great. But mm -hmm. you get Liriano one time through, and then you hand the ball to uh, what's his face that we just got from the Angels. And because I mean that guy started like twenty games last year for the yeah. Giants. And I know it's not ideal, but like this is these are the cards you're dealt. I, I I'm not a fan of rushing Keller up. I'm I'm just not. I know it's tempting. I know he's nasty, and I, honestly, he's. Not probably. He is better than Stephen Brault. He is better. He's better than pretty much any other option you have. But that's something where do you want to make? Do you want to make the same mistake twice? What you saw with Glass now, uh, and this guy, he's not blowing people away to the level that Glass now was in AAA when he was called up. To the level that Garrett Cole was when he was called up. So. Just give it a couple more months. Until then, you know, you just got to fight and scrap and give a couple other guys some chances. I really think bullpenning is the overall answer, though. I, I like that. Now, I'm going to say this, too. Like, I was definitely on board with, like, Brawl's first start, too. I think he got a lot of hate where it wasn't really necessarily needed. My biggest thing was <laughs> people were pissed off that he pitched four innings and allowed the two runs. But ultimately, like, he did his job. You know, he, no, he had yeah. four outings all year 
once he went over two innings, I mean, like, what were you expecting from Brault, who was on the on the bus to Indy essentially till he got you know rushed back again like the next day to come back? To, to I mean, you cannot expect this guy to go five out there, six out there, give those type of innings. You know, I mean, the fact that he went four, only gave up two, like he gave this team a chance, and they did win. Now the last one, like you said, yeah, it was a bad outing. It was bad. It, outing. it was bad. <laughs> You nailed it, but like that's the thing, and like I'm not gonna, I'm not about to go look up game logs from spring training. But my guess is he never even went five in spring training. Oh, I'm sure. So not. when's no. when when's the last time this guy has gone over four innings? Exactly. 2018 in April. Why why would you expect anyone, anyone? This I mean, so many times I think uh, I love how the numbers have influenced baseball and it really expanded it into a thinking person's game. Cause that's what I think makes baseball great. It makes, you can have a guy like Pablo Reyes who, I mean, mm. not, maybe not the best example. Jose Altuve, better example can be a top 10 player in this game, even though he's only, he's shorter than I am, but it's because he understands how to play it. And that's not the same case in a lot of other sports. It's a thinking man's game. And, I think at times we lose track of the human element of things where if this was a video game, sure. If Steven Brawl's cruising, you can keep him in there. You can fight through the fatigue. You can try to get guys to swing and miss, whatever. But this isn't a video game. It's real life. This is a guy, sure, he might be able to go five or six that day, but don't ask anything of him in the next 10 days because his body's just not used to that. So many people can't really even comprehend what it's like to throw a baseball 92 miles an hour. I, There's I not many people who I, can say that. I don't. And I don't when, know what that's like. I have no <laughs> idea. And, like, when you ask your body to do that, think of how much you throw. You, you throw probably 100 pitches before the game, right? right? When you're warming up in the bullpen, when you're doing your long toss, when you're stretching out. Then you're throwing your pitches before every inning. You're wearing a freaking winter jacket in the middle of summer now. Uh, I mean, think of what – the hell you're putting your arm through every time you start a ball game. And when your body's not conditioned for that hell, that marathon that is a start in the major leagues, you can't keep doing that. So, yes, this is a process. Stephen Brault was fine the first time around. He sucked the second time around. If he's going to be good once and then bad the second time all the way through until we get time back, you know what? That's good enough. That's good enough. I'm and, not – And I'm that's not, the thing too. Like, I mean, yeah. you're essentially looking at like a fifth starter. You know, I think that the fifth starter gets so overblown. Everyone thinks that you need like an ace as your fifth starter per se, where like you need a guy that's going to give you an opportunity and a chance. So Brault did it the first game. Last time he didn't, you know, I'm okay with you as well. I'm more into like, let's, let's try to get the opener. Let's use that. Let's get some creativity. If it's Liriano to start off, it's a whomever. Uh, Liriano has like impressed me tremendously this year. I didn't think he was going to make the club. You know, I looked at it as like, eh, it's a pirate trying to do something, reclaim some old magic. Uh, he's not going to make out of spring. And like, he's really after like Felipe and I guess Crick, I mean, he's really like our third best reliever this year. Oh, hands and down. Super I mean, consistent. There's, there's two dudes in the locker room who I just love being on the team. Cause they make me feel like I could probably still be a pro athlete. And that's Liriano <laughs> still. and Melky. Like when they get out of the shower, I'm like, you know what? I don't need to go to the gym that much anymore. <laughs> like they're pro athletes. No, but in the series, like Liriano has been really good this year. Yes. And like, I'm willing to give him like again. I'm not gonna ask him to go seven innings. No. Go through go through the lineup one time, or just go three innings, and then we can hand you over to someone else who can go three innings. Hell, I'd be fine with giving the ball to Nick Kingham in the fourth inning, mm-hmm. as long as you're not. I think Nick Kingham sucks in the first inning because he's facing the three best hitters on the team. So you give him the ball when it's seven, eight, nine. I think. He gets into a little bit more of a groove. Maybe he's able to give you three innings out of the pen. So, yes, that's where the opener comes in. Also, I just think that, and this probably goes for a lot of fan bases, but I think Pittsburgh is a big uh, victim of the moment at times, both when times are really good and times are really bad. Sure. you got to remember, there have not been a lot of injuries for the Pirates rotation in the last however many years i think 2017 they only had six different starters until like september that was the year i mean like no one got hurt right and then last year i mean they they had a couple guys go down like musgrove started the season hurt archer was on the aisle just a little bit you know chad cool obviously went down but overall i mean they've been pretty healthy and this is the first time they've had 
a significant injury in the starting rotation for a while. And, you know, it happens. Like, that that happens to most baseball teams in a season. And it's okay. Like, it's, it's very long. Like, even when Jamison Tyone comes back, there will still be a whole lot of baseball games. He'll probably make 20 starts this year. You know, like... For sure, man. I mean, think about it's like, be what, all right. what, what has happened already with all these injuries. Um, yeah. But three games over. Wait, still, no, two. No, two now. Yeah, I guess two. I forgot well, the when game. Well, when already. they win tonight, it'll be three. There you go, right? right? When Thrill you yeah. know, throws the uh, shit out. Actually, I don't even have the mm-hmm. game on. I feel horrible. But, oh, uh, dude, he got, well, he had the bases loaded in the first thing and got out of it. And of now course he did. <laughs> every everybody's favorite pr- pirate, uh, Elmore, is at the plate, wearing the highly coveted number 68. Nice. Why 68? Oh, why not? One away One away from me. Why not actually. one away? I'm saying, why not 69? By the way, mm-hmm. Smitty once again says, your shirt looks stupid and wired headphones, question mark? My shirt is actually from uh, one of the sponsors on Team Noah. It's uh, No Negations. Shout out them. One of my two sponsors uh, who endorsed me. It's actually one of my friends who I went to college with. He started his own like fitness brand. Um that's where I get my beautiful physique, Smitty. So, uh, so you get personally and endorsed. wireless headphones. Yeah, I have two endorsements. Yes, personally endorsed. Wow, big yeah, money. Yeah, well, big I mean, they're just here. under they're under my umbrella because I have rather than selling one podcast, I tell them I have two podcasts and I do on camera content for Pittsburgh Sports Live. So I say endorse me, and then I'll I'll do it in all three of my things. Nice, nice. When well, listening, you can endorse me as well. Yeah, for a you low, start low price your brand. of free ninety nine. Yeah, I mean, this was a this. I mean, mainly this is like a, a couple t shirts and like not not a lot of money. There you but go. my big sponsor. I mean, that's how is, you get uh, the forty inch TVs, though. You know what I mean? So yes, for real. Yeah, I don't even think I bought this. I'm pretty sure it's a Christmas <laughs> gift. So again, shout out Jenny. <laughs> two two shout outs from my mom in this show, and we're not even through the second. And look at this that. Game. What what uh, oh, so week off after Mother's Day perfectly timed. Absolutely, I mean you want to you want to know what kind of woman my mom is. She drove all the way from Ohio to come here, and we went down to the North Shore and watched Pirates game. We went to Southern Tier. That's what you want to do on Mother's Day. Just pound some pound Excellent. some brews with her son and just watch some baseball. We made my little sister drive us home. And we Southern Tier, tipsy. high quality. I love it. Yes, I yes, love it. it was great. Mm-hmm. All right. So, no, I'm loving everything that you're saying, man. I mean, seriously, like, Liriano, I mean, the thing is, he's, like, he's pitching well against righties and lefties, both. Like, exactly yes. the same. Like, the splits are identical for the most part. You know, and so I'm loving everything about Liriano right now. So, I'm good. If we're going into, like, a bullpenning and opener, that situation, I'm intrigued. I want to see it. Let's put it that way. I'm not discrediting Brawl. I'm not saying, get that man out of here. I want to see what this can do. Like, what this can present i my so only that's kind of where i'm at yeah my only worry about making liriano pitch three innings is like having to make him walk to the mound three times <laughs> and back like that might be my biggest concern like i don't know if he'd be down for that aside from that i don't worry about his pitching at all i think he can handle it yeah i really do mm-hmm. i mean i think if you had him work to it i i mean i i don't want it to come to this because i like him a, as a reliever I think he's capable of being a fifth starter. I think, like, what he's shown. I don't want to test it. I don't want to test that theory. But, like, that's right. kind of like an, ir- an irrational confidence Noah take right there, which you'll get many more of as I continue <laughs> to drink these. So, But I'll tell you what, I'm yeah. with you on that, too, because I've seen a lot of people saying yeah. around there, like, you know, Liriano, make him the fifth starter. And it's almost like I feel like why ruin something that's not broken? You know, yes. like it's working. It's, 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 and trust me, we need people in the bullpen, too. So if he's doing good here, let's just keep him there. Maybe we can redefine that role a little bit and see how it works. Your long relievers to me are like a savings account. You dip into it, but you don't empty it out the first time there's a problem. You know, you you still try to actively seek other ways. Like when you need money, your mentality should be, I need to find other ways to make money, not let's just drain my savings (laughs) and, and worry about that later. No, like we'll dip into this. But let's just not drain the savings and ruin Liriano and everyone else right, right. in May. Like, we'll, we'll figure it out. But, like, let's just try everything once or twice. And then, you know, if we really need Liriano, we'll, we'll consider it a little further down the line. I like it. I mm. like it a lot, man. Um, Financial advice. That's how you get a 40-inch TV. 
see all, all this you get sponsors you don't dip into your mm-hmm. savings man, you got it oh, going yeah. you got it going mm-hmm. Noah. i try <laughs> um so obviously as you mentioned you, know, you work the games uh you do have yeah. the ability to go into the press box right you're behind mm-hmm. the scenes up there we see pictures of you and alex all the time capital j capital j journalist right here capital j you, you got mm-hmm. alex the the 38 monitors in front of him uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to know the story behind that tell us so I I write for the fans website and um, but what I, normally when I'm writing my articles our editor is like home for the day so they'll see my article but it's like they'll edit it when I when they see it it's not like as soon as I put if I were to write it during the work day mm-hmm. they would just edit I would post it and it'd be edited like within minutes but like it could go hours sometimes they won't get to it till like 7 a.m. the next day there could be I mean there's a lot of people that follow the fan on Twitter so like. If I have a yeah, grammar error or spelling error, it's like, I'll look really stupid, and I don't want to do that. So normally I will get a host or, you know, like there's some writers that work for the fan also. So if, like, Kevin Gorman's there or something, I'll ask mm-hmm. him to edit it. But, like, Alex, you know, one of my best buddies, and he, we sit by each other sometimes, and I'll just be like, hey, could you edit this? And then, like, he <laughs> he already has, like, a couple of things going on. And then uh, Anthony Jazakowski, I think his last name is. I forget. Ant- his name's Anthony Jazz on Twitter. I, I just always mess up his last name. Um, he just, he's one of Alex's really good friends too. And he just starts roasting. I'm like, look at this nerd with all <laughs> these computers. So then we all just push, we just start piling computers and everything. I'm pulling out my laptop. And that's how that picture was taken. Like, there was just people contributing computers left and right to him. And he was like actually doing something nice for me. And I still use that as an opportunity to roast him because that's kind of how our friendship works. I mean, you have every opportunity you get, you got to take advantage of it. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. all for that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate it. So keep giving us this gold on Twitter. I'm, I'm here uh-huh. for that. Um, yeah, but you I know, will. give us some insight. I mean, like what is a typical night or day, you know, in the press box of a pirate game? So for me, I get to the stadium for a 7 o'clock game. I like to get there around 2, 2.15, uh, sometimes 2.30. I uh, will try to park. I like to get there super early. Um, that's how I approached it last year when it was my first year, just having a credential. Because so, so you would kind of consider yourself like the Kobe Bryant. Yes, and that's exactly it. Like, it's like I am, I am by far the youngest person there. And it's, you know, there are a lot of people who probably look at me and be like, who's this kid? Why is he here? And I wanted to show people, like, damn it, I belong here. Like, I'm willing to work hard. You know, I'm I'm not going to – I'm not with the athletic. I'm not, you know, posting anything right now. I'm not writing a column. But, like, I, I want to have that one day, and I'm willing to put the work in. So I go there early, and I try to get there before everyone else, and I like to get there and – Partially, it's it's cool to get there early when no one's there and just, like, have PNC Park as your office. I mean, oh, think about man. that. Like, you sit up there, you see the pictures from the view of the press box. Like, how peaceful is that? Like, on a nice afternoon, you have the beautiful view. You sit up there, and you're just writing out, like, your pregame story. And, like, I mean, you're looking up websites. This, I'm sure that's, like, their dream. Yes. And, and like, like you said, that view, oh, my God. I can do that with my credential – I can do that whenever I want, even when I'm not scheduled. Like I could go there, probably not right now, but like, like on days, like in the afternoon on days when they're on the road, I could still go up there with my credential. And I don't know why people don't do it more often. I mean, like, it's just so peaceful just looking at that view and just writing when there's not a lot of people there. And it's, it's just really nice to get a lot of work done. I'll have like fan grass open or baseball And I'm just mm-hmm. like searching different stuff. And then, you know, the writers start piling in. You make a little bit of small talk until um, until the host gets there. It's either Craig or Dan Gr- Zangrilli. Uh, in the past, has been Josh Taylor, of course, Chris Mack. And then I'll ask them. I'm like, uh, so my mentality is I, tr- I try to get sound for the station. And if they're going to use that in the pregame show, if they want to use it for updates, sometimes they'll use it on, you know, Pony and Muller or, or Cook and Joe. However, it's just like I ask them. I'll ask people before I go. I'll ask, like, the update anchors, anyone you want me to talk to. And then I'll ask the host. I'll say, who do you want me to talk to? Give me a player. And I'll have some ideas. I'll be like, here's a storyline. Like, I thought this would be good. I thought we'd talk to Cole Tucker about playing Arizona because he grew up there. I thought we'd talk to Josh Bell about playing, you know, playing Texas and maybe ask him about the DH. 
because, you know, like that might be coming to the National League soon. He'd probably be the guy. So, like, stuff like that. I think of story ideas, they would give me, you know, what they would want. Some guys are more direct. Some guys are just saying, I trust you. Do whatever you want. So I'll make up a list of my questions. I'll have everything prepared. We go downstairs at around 3.15. Hurdle talks at 3.30. So we get in the clubhouse at 3.15. As soon as we get in there, um, I try to be like the first one to the lineup card. That way I can take a picture and post it on Twitter. I like to try to beat Rob Beer Temple. That's my goal. I don't have anything against Rob Beer Temple. It's just that like he's the athletic beat reporter. So it's like <laughs> if I can if I can beat him to the scoop uh, when Marte's batting second, like you're damn right I'm going to try to do that. There you go. So I, I'll do that, and then I just go out, and you, it's actually pretty awkward after that because you stand there in the middle of the clubhouse, and if you don't have anyone to talk to, you're just waiting for Clint to tell you, come in my office. So you're just standing there with your thumb up your ass, basically, like just waiting around. There's, like, dudes walking around naked, or, you know, you have Felipe just blasting music, like blasting it, and, like, most of it's, you know – latin so like you don't you don't know what he said uh, you don't know the music or whatever it's it's just loud and everyone's having these inside jokes and you're just kind of like oh, yeah so, good one yeah like you so, don't know what's so going it's on a room of people loud music blasting you standing by yourself sounds like high school all over again yeah basically <laughs> especially for alex uh no but uh, <laughs> and uh and no but then you you know you you have your couple of players that you're comfortable around and you'll make some small talk with them um before and then you know sometimes you do your one-on-ones uh if there's a big storyline that day like if a guy just got called up or Mm -hmm. if someone comes off the dl or il sorry uh that's like that's when you get those pre-game interviews or whatever and that's normally when i'm getting my pre-game sound i'm always trying to get you know guys and my mentality is when it's my when it's my choice I try to get guys you normally don't hear from because those are especially the younger ones because i plan to be around here for a while and, like, I want to form relationships with guys like Brian Reynolds and and Cole Tucker because I'm only 24. They're 24, 22 years old. So when they're 30 and hopefully, like, all-stars, hopefully, you know, I'm progressing in my career as well. And we both can look back at it. It's like, hey, remember our early days in the majors when I was your first interview and, you know, you were one of my first or whatever? So, like, that's the kind of, like, relationships I'm looking to build right now. And you do that until 3.30, then you all pile around in Clint's office, and I set my recorder on his desk, and we all ask him questions. Bill Brink asks him about 30 different questions about, like, guys going into the dugout, or going into the clubhouse in between at bats, and it's like, Clint, how often do they use the video replay to watch their swings? I mean, this guy literally asked this, like, 30 times. Every time, like, I... I, if I took a drink every time this dude asked, this, and like a home stand, I would die of alcohol poisoning. It is insane. <laughs> he is so fascinated by it. Um, but like there, there are some cool conversations. Like it, it ends up being like 15, 20 minutes. You only hear like six of it on the pregame show because I had to edit it afterwards to meet like, you know, fit in our segment time. Right. But there's some really cool conversations we have about like, you know, Clint loves talking about the good old days. Like most, you know, old guys who like baseball. I mean, my dad likes talking about the good old days. So he'll talk about, except my dad didn't know Bobby Cox or like <laughs> play with Nolan Ryan. Yeah, his so, stories like, aren't as, uh, as yeah, intriguing, so, I would like, say. Yeah, but like Clint, so Clint will tell some good stories and it's interesting. I mean, the, after all, like the guy's been around forever and he went to a World Series and, you know, so he has some interesting stuff that you'll just kind of sit around and it's like that kind of stuff that doesn't get printed and doesn't go over the radio and there's nothing that really stands out too much but like it's just those kind of stuff where you're, it's like wow like i'm just sitting here like having like camp campfire campfire side chats with with clint hurdle right now and sure. it's pretty neat you know like that guy's been a fly on the wall for some really really big baseball moments and he's telling us about it and we're gonna tell you about it and that'll come up every now and then but that kind of stuff happens. After that, you go back into the clubhouse maybe for a little bit. The beat reporters will go down on the field for batting practice. I'll go upstairs. I'll edit the sound. I'll edit my player interview. I'll edit the uh, Clint Hurdle sound or if we talk to the trainer or whatever. Um, I'll edit all that sound. I set it back. I'll go outside, produce the pregame show, come back, try to get that press buffet. It's $10 because Nutting's cheap and he hates what? us. What? Yes. Come right. on, Nutting. 
No, I'm dead serious. Listen. And $10, how, how legit is it? I mean, it's pretty legit. Okay. I, I'm, okay. I'm not going to go. Well, I will say this. I will say this, Donardo. They took away the Panini Press this year. No Panini Press. They had their they had a Panini Press and a cold cut area. So the way it works is there's like a buffet and it's like Lexus Club food. Like, it's pretty sure. good. Sure. Okay. Um, like, I think I had like prime rib the last time I had it. Oh. It's like, it's. I mean, for, yeah, so I guess like, for 10 bucks, it's still pretty solid. Yeah, but, but like, I mean, they're making pretty you pay much. 10 bucks. I mean, you eat for free at the Steelers practice facility, so I don't... Right. Yeah, I mean, like, they could afford to pay. They could afford to make it free. That's all I got to say. But anyway... By the way, um, Smitty says, oh, wow, Noah actually is my idol. Okay, so anyway, uh, you you get I get the press buffet, but yeah, you have the lineup. It's got a nice buffet. You got the desserts in the, in the back left corner. In the back right corner, it used to be a sandwich little area, like cold cuts, and you could have a panini press... All that's gone. It's it's just hot dogs back in the right corner with a popcorn. Just machine. hot dogs, no buns. But here's the thing, and I hope Bobby Nutting isn't listening to this, or I'm about to have this credential ripped in half. Every time uh, my dad comes, Mister Hiles, uh, I have him send me a text, and he'll just be like, "Yo, like I'm here with like four people, and I'll just stuff like eight hot dogs in a to-go box, oh and I'll go visit him." So yeah, June first, hit me up. I'll, I'll bring you uh, some some dogs. Perfect. That doesn't go for everyone don't worry. watching this. It's when this just on the podcast, Leonardo. I'll make sure it's all censored. It's, it's top secret right now. <laughs> the only ones yeah, that heard so, this are on the stream. So absolutely, this is why it's so important to go. come on the stream. This is the inside information um, you get. <laughs> yeah, so like I'll, I'll I'll hook my dad up with some dogs, and then they have the salad bar too. But it's pretty good. So I'll get some press dining. I'll be eating that like ten minutes before the game starts. I get upstairs just in time to uh, see first pitch, and sometimes I'll sit. We have our own broadcast booth uh, for the fan. Normally, so if they were playing a team with a Spanish broadcast team, uh, so like Texas or San Francisco or someone from the West, um, the Spanish broadcast booth will be taken. So we're in the auxiliary booth. Uh, but most of the time we're in the Spanish booth, which means it's right above the 1925 pennant okay. above home plate or, in, you know, home plate on the upper deck. That's where our booth normally is. And the ox booth, we're like behind a camera, so you can't see us. But the Spanish booth, we just open the windows and we're like like Steve Blast when he's like throwing oh, stuff out the window. Cool. Like we're in the next booth over. So it's pretty cool. Like and you get that we literally are by ourselves. Like Craig and I, every Sunday, we call it Sunday dinner. We buy a p- uh, pizza from Slice on Broadway, another part of uh, Team Noah endorsements. Uh-oh. Uh shout out them. Uh but we buy a whole pizza. We just have a pizza party every Sunday. We just set it up. There's like a little top area, and we make that a little buffet with like chips and pretzels and everything. We just have a pizza party and watch it in our private box for the Pirates. That's dope. pretty awesome, dude. Um, but on other days, you know, I'll sit there with the writers, and the print guys have their own little section. Um, so there's like all the beat reporters. The front row is all TV people, and then there's like seven empty seats, and then there's another guy in Pittsburgh who has his own website, and no one sits by him. Um, uh, and, um, no shade. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, he's actually been nothing but kind to me, so I'm not going to try to throw any shade. I'm just pointing uh, out well. facts. The only people who sit by him are his employees, but not his Pirates employee. Anyway. Uh, so, anyway. Oh, man. Um, You'll have the TV people and him in the front row, and then the beat reporters kind of like in the middle, in the middle row. The columnists are up high, and then to the left is where like all the people from the fan will sit. And uh, it could be anyone. Sometimes some hosts will come. Sometimes it'll be you know some producers on their day off. Uh, sometimes it's just me. And uh, when it's that, you know, I'll just sit with Alex. Alex is kind of like in between the radio people. And mm-hmm. the print people, because he doesn't really, you know, have, I don't think he's really close with any of, like, the hardcore beat guys. I think him and Nesbitt were kind of close, but, like, Alex isn't, like, chilling with Bill Brink. Or, you know who's really dope, though, is Nubias Wilborn. Oh, really he good. sees it, man. I- I've really been so good excited dude. since him, see him come over to Pittsburgh. So. He came on uh, River Blast. I did an interview with him, and we just talked, like, 90s Atlanta Braves, because, like, he grew up like watching that he grew up in atlanta right and like that was where he got his start too like he covered he like he basically did what i did he was like a reporter and a producer for a radio station flagship station during like the 90s braves era gotcha. like yeah like late 90s so like when they were losing the world series to the yankees like that kind of era but like still like watch the smoltz glavin and maddox like in their prime 
So, like, he had a lot of good stories to tell. He's a great dude. He's awesome. He keeps it real. He doesn't really hold back when people are rude to him. Yeah. But he's a cool guy. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty quiet up in the press box. There's no cheering, which is another reason I like sitting in our own booth. Because Craig and I, I feel like print people, and I don't fault them for this, they – try to remain on unbi- you know like there's no cheering in the press box yeah. rah, 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 I mean, rah, rah, you, whatever you, you you keep it civil and a lot of them but it's it almost comes off like jaded like they can't get like i don't care who you are like when josh bell hits a ball into the freaking allegheny river like you show some emotion like that's happened four times in the history of a 19 year old right. baseball stadium and, like, and i feel that even like it's, it's not even it has to be like power i mean just seeing that happen whoever it was that's exactly it like but, like, if you were to, like, go, like, holy shit. Like, when that happened, like, everyone would look at you like you're the weirdo. So, like, that's <laughs> right. why Craig and I like to sit in our own box, like, in our own booth. Because, like, we keep it real. Like, I'm a fan of the Pirates. I grew up. I got roasted for wearing my red Freddie Sanchez jersey oh, not to the school. Red one. Not the oh, red yeah, one. Oh, yeah. The red one. Yes. Jeez, I'm, like I question all I, of your – Yeah. My, my friends – like, I got made fun of all the time for, like, going to a whole bunch of games when I was little. Because, like, they stunk. Uh, but, like, I stuck with it. I was always a diehard Pirates fan. I'm not going to, like, just abandon that because, you know, I cover the team now. Uh, will I, you know, will I lie and say that, like, my fan perspective has changed a little bit now that I do cover the team? Yeah, yeah it has. It definitely has. But, like, I think it's better. Like, I know these guys on a personal level now. Like, I could tell you who's a dick and who's not. I could tell you whose dick I've seen and who I haven't, you know, <laughs> like on that boss. level. Boss. Yeah, <laughs> boss. Yeah, but, oh, uh, no, but, uh, like, that's that's it. Like, it's easy to cheer for these guys. I think that it's a clubhouse of genuinely good people. And so, like, I do get excited, and that's why I like being on off on my own, where Craig and I can high-five when they score runs and hit a walk-off home run in extra innings. We will yell. Like, I will yell, like, hell yeah. Like, if you watch that video of my fight or the the video I had on Twitter of the fight when Puig like tried to fight the entire Pirates, yes. I was screaming. Yes. I was like, "Look at him, he's going!" Like, could not have done that over in press row. I would have got like Rob Beer Temple would have crucified me. Literally, I think I would have been crucified. And that again, nothing against Rob. He's a good dude. I'm just messing. I just think of him because like he's kind of like the alpha dog out of the out of the ones in the pack. I would say he, he's the alpha dog. You're you're where you need to be. That's for sure. Yeah. He's the alpha dog. I would say, um, Parado's kind of like the old vet. Like he's like that guy in jaws where they're like looking to catch the shark. And he's like the old fisherman. (laughs) Like, you don't know. He has like the hat down in the back of the bar. Like, (laughs) Oh God. Right. Son, you don't know what it takes to catch a fish like that. Like that's him. Um, everyone's kind of got their own personality, their own role. They all kind of have their own social circles. And I like mine. I like being with the, the fans. I'm always walking around during the games, meeting people, hanging out. Anytime my friends are there, I'm, I'm active. Cause like my job is to really work before and after the game. During the game, I'm supposed to write a couple articles, but I show up super early and I try to get them typed out mm, to where I can have them posted. Uh, I try to post it at an appropriate time where I know it'll get a lot of clicks but, like, I'll have it done so, like, I can make sure it's posted whenever, you know? So I can actually enjoy it because it's a freaking cool job. I really like it. And then after the game, I go down there. Clint talks for five minutes about, you know, his scorecard. Uh, we interview the pitcher uh, and, you know, maybe two hitters on the game. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Robbie asks questions about, you know, last year it was El Chone. He brought it up approximately 9,000 times. And, um, and we call it a day. I send the sound back in and we're good to go. So that's, that's a day on the pirates beat, I guess. Sorry. That was so long, but no, that's, I tried that's to keep great. It entertaining. That's great. I liked yeah. it. And, and so mm-hmm. my next question actually ties in a lot, what you just said. So speaking of old man Parada, I want, I want to know over and under 162, which of course is only 81 home games. That means two stories a game, right? Over and under 162. How many stories this man told you? Cause, like, Dude, I mean, you, you he about a gets fly through. On the wall. He 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 tells two stories before the game starts, <laughs> and like it's not like long ones. Like I just ranted for like seven minutes because I'm I'm a jackass. Uh, but like he's someone like 
like it's genuine. Like the guy, there's certain people who are just born to be baseball writers. I was saying, I was talking about this with Craig. Like, like in there, it's evident. Like you see them, and Parado's one of them. Like he wrote, he's wrote for like a million different outlets. It's sure. because it's not like it's his only option. Like the guy's smart. He could do a million different things, I'm sure. But like, this is what God put him on the earth to do. And he's good at it. And he's done it for a long time. And he has so many stories. So it just, it comes natural to him. We'll be in the elevator and he'll see like someone's shoes. And he'll be like, oh, I remember Kevin Young used to really love his sneakers. And like, it just leads to this story. And like, and there's just a million of those stories. So yeah, I'm dead serious when I say like, before the game, like he, he's one of the guys who shows up pretty early. Uh, and like, he'll just see something like you'll see. Oh, another reason I like going early. I like to see who's like taking warm ups and stuff like Josh Bell out there before me Ooh. taking grounders every day, which is awesome. And like, I see that and it's like, why aren't you working harder, Noah? Cause like Josh Bell is, and maybe one day if I keep showing up early, I'll hit balls in the Allegheny river. Uh, but anyway, Parado will be like, I remember Jack Wilson used to do that. And he'll just go on that story. But I will say he's got the second best stories in the press box. Oh, number one is Jack Z, and it's not even close. Oh well, you know what? That makes so much sense. Yeah, which shout out like, to Newcastle. <laughs> yes, dude, I can't tell you. You want to talk about reoccurring things that happen? I feel like the entire Newcastle squad rolls up to our pregame show, and they just give him that Newcastle dap. <laughs> in the middle of the free agent. they don't say anything it's just on site like they can smell the new castle on them or something and they just dap them up dude that guy that guy i mean i don't know if you read the pirates guide i had to sit down with him and i i wrote like uh like i basically transcribed like this interview but there are so many stories jack just will tell that he'll, he'll look at me and he'll say i better not end up on that blog or whatever cast you do and it's like <laughs> look man I, I would never do anything. I mean, Jack sure. is literally like my – he's my baseball grandpa, man. I mean, he gives me so much shit because I'm so much younger than mm -hmm. anyone else there. And he and he, he admires me, and I I, and I I love the guy to death. But, like, so many stories he will tell you. It's just like your jaw will drop. Like, he told this story one time about, like, how Jack Wilson hated – he traded for Jack Wilson. Like, yeah, that's the Mariners. True. Yeah. And he's like, Jack Wilson hated being a Mariner. He wanted to be in Pittsburgh forever. Mm -hmm. And he hated being – he moved Jack Wilson to second base. It blew it, – it pissed him off to no end. He was like, I'm a freaking shortstop. Like, he used to have, like, fits over it and stuff. And, like, stories like that. Like, Ryan Domit was, like, thirsty to be a Mariner. Like, called him on his wedding day. Not oh, Jack's wow. wedding day. Ryan Domit called him from his own wedding. Yeah. He's like, yo, Jack, I want to be signed. And Jack was like, that's nice. And that was it. <laughs> Check his baseball card. He never played in Seattle. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> like – We'll, we'll let him know stories. we hated Jeff Clement, so. Yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but, like, Jack's stories, like, John's stories are cool if you're a Pirates fan. Mm -hmm. Jack's stories are cool if you're a baseball fan. Because the dude was a part of the 86 Mets. The dude was a part of the early 90s Pirates. The guy signed Robinson Cano. The guy uh, helped land CC Sabathia in a trade. He developed Ryan Braun. He was around for Ryan Braun when Ryan Braun became – probably the most hated player in baseball. I mean, he is, he knows everyone. So like his stories are awesome. That's and awesome. again, him and Parado between the two of them. If I really kept my recorder running the whole day, I could probably write a book just from the stories they write. It's hard to remember them. Cause when you hear so many of them, you just like all kind of blend together. But like every day you go home with a smile and it's like the, it, their stories are almost as cool as like just the job itself. Wow. That's dope, yeah. man. Yeah, it so, is. It's, it's pretty sweet. That's cool. Well, I appreciate all that. Um, we're going to wrap up the show now. We're going to play a little game. This, this is for the fans. So, all right. <laughs> so what we're going to do right now, so like you just said, you have a podcast. I don't think you plug that actually st too much. So go ahead and, and plug that for us. All right. So I have two. Uh, the Pirates one is uh, the River Blast podcast. It's featuring myself and Alex Stumpf, uh, the beat writer for SB Nation. In my opinion, probably the most intellectual writer you will find on Pirates Baseball. I know we all give him crap because he's like, you know, a nerd and <laughs> everything. But like the guy is damn good at what he does. I've learned so much about the game of baseball from reading Alex's stuff and just being around him. 
he is, again, one of the few people who's meant to do what he's doing right now in this world. Sure. Uh, so I have that. And then my other podcast is called Underpaid and Overrated. That's where I'll talk about more than just baseball, literally about everything. We talked about Kenny Wood Fries the other day. Um, we talked about Game of Thrones, everything, really. And uh, we make you, we make like video content on that as well. So look us up on YouTube, Underpaid and Overrated. Um and yeah, look us up on iTunes and everything. So those are my two podcasts. But the reason I'm on here is not for underpaid and overrated. It's of course for River Blast podcast. That's how you probably know me. So yeah, pirate stuff. And that's where we're going with this. And, and there you go. And again, I I really appreciate you coming on. Um, hmm. If you haven't noticed or whatnot, I've been having guests on this show. We run this every other week. Ryan is in the middle of building a house. He's actually living in his parents' basement, which I bust his okay. balls about all the time. Literally, like he's at his parents' basement. <laughs> hey, I mean, so he's does, he have, does he have in. a forty-inch TV though? You know what? I don't know. It, it might only be it might only be thirty-nine <laughs> inches. So. Oh, 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 buddy, you need to start looking for a co-host. I'm telling I mean, you, I'm telling you. But yeah. here's the deal: so he's actually moving in this week. This is gonna be the last guest we have until we both of us on, which is gonna be pretty cool. So, yeah. um, but I thought it'd be really cool. So I have it's just me. It's just you. We each have a podcast where it's duos. So we're going to play a game, game called Guess Who. So essentially, you're going to ask me 10 questions. I'm going to ask you 10 questions. I have to guess if it's either you or Alex. You'd have to guess if it's either me or Ryan. And then okay. based on that, whoever has the most points wins. We got something cool. So the loser, the loser right now, we'll tell, tell us what we're going to do, Noah. Well, if you lose, dum, dum, da, dum. you have to eat. You have to eat a Pittsburgh cone, and which you've is been my go-to all punishment. Over this, I'm, I'm telling you, yeah. I swear every time someone does something, that's your go-to. And I see this, Alex, and I laugh it's just about Alex. it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but but anyways, like I, I swear, like I see this and I laugh, and now I'm like, shit, th this might be me because I have no, absolutely no desire to eat this thing. No, it's bad. I mean, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty like, why gross, is it even man. a thing? Why is I that mean, something? It won't be there after the All-Star break. I mean, it's the novelty food item of novelty food items. <laughs> My guess is – and they, they were, like, bragging. Like, I asked the people in the concession stand. I'm like, have you guys sold a lot of these? They're like, oh, yeah, a whole bunch. I'm like, how many were, like, opening weekend? Right. And, like, how many were, like, after that? They're like – The number one the customer, summer. Alex Stump. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, poor Alex, man. I feel so bad for the <laughs> guy that he had to do that. Um so yeah, and then you get to so, decide my punishment. What do you want to do? So yeah, so basically, if you lose, you got, mm -hmm. you got to wear a shirt. The one you referenced earlier, right? The pony says my shirt's uh, my shirt is white because of course yes. it's a black shirt. Your boy pony. Yes. We have some fun yes. with this. Uh, we we all know the tragedy causes in Pittsburgh sports these days. So it is so you got to you got to wear other. that shirt. Take a picture of it wherever. I don't care. Um, and I will tag Andrew. I, hell, I'll try to get the picture with Andrew. How about that? That'll be dope. <laughs> I'll try to do that. Nice. Okay. All and right. Maybe he'll, he'll probably only like punch me in the face once after that. So just once. No, nah, but Andrew's a good dude, man. Guys got to lay off him on Twitter. I know that he ruins everything. <laughs> like he's the reason. <laughs> I know he's the reason the Penguins got swept. I know he's the reason the Steelers didn't make the playoffs. I know he's the reason Jameson Tyone's hurt. But don't get me wrong. Like he is a good dude. What got me to dude. actually the day that shirt was made, and I I joke with Ryan too. Um, I mean, I grew up liking Pitt, but honestly, just over the years, I've like just watched less and less like college football, basketball, and everything. But uh, mm -hmm. the, the Pitt game when when he was like, "Oh, Pitt got this, no problem." I forget who they're playing, right? And they got embarrassed. That was the that was the day that shirt was created. <laughs> I was like, okay, because you know, for so long, it's just like like he's like a novelty. You know, uh, this is just ironic. I mean. This can't just keep going, and it does. And I was like, "All right, we're, 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 we got to capitalize on this." So I when made that shirt hosts, that day. Yeah, like when when like people, you know, like local podcasts or just like you know, fans of Pittsburgh sports are like saying it. That's one thing, but like when the hosts, when his own coworkers, oh, I, I know, are, it's like everyone's it. trolling like him. Like when Dunlap and Mueller and Starkey and like all. These guys who he works with right. are roasting him about it. It's funny. I'm sorry. And, and what kills me, funny. like, this is the thing about, too. Like, you could see someone who's just like, I'm going to make the most egregious thing to, like, make myself. Like, everything he says, 
sounds legit. Like that legitimate, yes. I can see that happening. Well, nothing he, is out of the ordinary. Nothing just sounds like he's trying to do this. Everything he says, I buy into. And then there's it just, not, like happens to there's the not way. one thing Andrew will say that is just like, I'm going to say this to say it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to say this for a reaction. Andrew, right. you'll talk to anyone, any producer, any host, any, but any reporter, anyone at the fan. Andrew is the most prepared person, period. I mean, he goes there super early. He is like one of the only talents who will cut his own sound. So like he doesn't have the producers. A lot of show hosts will be like, all right, so Colin Coward said this. I want you to clip it like four minutes in all the way to the end of the segment. Wait, wait. Andrew does all that on his own. He has all the stats and everything researched on his own. He is the hardest working, most prepared dude. And he has a rhyme for every, he, he has a rhyme to his reason, every single take he has. And it just consistently it. implodes every time. <laughs> I mean, it is insane. And it, it never that, like, fails. He has all of this research <laughs> and every time it just bought, it just bellies up. It is it is incredible. It is incredible. Uh, it's a, like you literally would think like he's gone into the future, like found, you know, one of the betting books, like in back to the and future, just went right? The opposite. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, but he's making like an actual analysis of it. That makes sense. Like it, I, just, mm. I can't believe like the track record. It's impeccable. Yeah. But yes, anyways, it, it really is. So yeah. So I'm going to eat one of them shitty ass cones. You're going to, you're going to wear the, uh, the pony shirt. The shirt. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll tell you what, so we're going to do is one of us is going to say all the 10 questions. And then we'll switch sides. So I'll give you the opportunity. You're the guest. Do you want to go first in answering or go last in answering? I'll go last. I'll go last. Okay. I'll, I'll read you my questions first and you guess. Okay. Good deal. All right. Here, let me let me do this real quick. One. Okay. So my first question. So between Alex and I, who are both credentialed, one of us in the press box, the home row – on our primary laptop, the home row keys are broken. So one of us has to bring another keyboard to insert it into the laptop that they already use to type up our stories or whatever work we're doing. Okay. Okay. Well, see, and the funny thing is, based on the start of this episode, I'd almost want to say you. <laughs> Due to some of the technical difficulties, right? But... I know your laptop is just a year old, mm -hmm. and you might have given this away because I've seen some pictures of Noah, or Noah Alex, and uh, all his monitors, and I do believe I've seen a keyboard. So I am going to go with Alex on this one. That is a good eye. I'm not telling you if you're right or wrong. Right, That's right. So we're going to hold off on the answers, but I am going with yes. Alex. That could have been my keyboard. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, like, that, I because I told you I the perfect cast setup. the picture. Yes. All right. One of us tackled Jesse James in his high school football career. <laughs> okay. So I would definitely see Alex getting tackled by Jesse James. So tackling Jesse James, I'm going to go with you, Noah. Okay. One of our, one of us, Alex or I, uh, their biggest fear is horses. Mm, interesting. The biggest fear is horses. Why would anyone fear horses? <laughs> that is interesting. So I'm going to go a shot in the dark and say you're opening up to me right now. I'm going to go with you, Noah. You are afraid of horses. Okay. Number four. One of our, between Alex and me, one of us, their, our biggest celebrity crush is Anna Kendrick. Solid. Anna, I, I feel like she appeals. I mean, everyone thinks she's attractive. I yeah, imagine. yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. I feel, I'm going to go, hmm. I'm going to go with, uh. I'm going to go with Alex. Okay. Oh, I wrote that on the wrong one. I'm trying to keep track of your answers here. All right. All right. 
One of our fathers, Alex or myself, makes a living tuning pianos. The music man, huh? Well, let's Literally. see here. Your mom's cool as hell. Clearly. Oh, she's a hell of a woman. Clearly. Hell of a woman. I don't know anything about Alex's parents. I, I can't imagine, but music. Uh, I haven't even heard Great any, people. Any I've you... never met them, but they raised the hell of a son. <laughs> uh, a music. Let's see here. Alex's Pianos. siblings are smart as hell, too. Like, his little brother went to Carnegie Mellon. I feel like nothing so. against you, but I feel like a lot of the really intelligent people, right, dabble into pianos. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of, I'm not saying my parents are dumb by any means, but I, you know, I wasn't into pianos. I wasn't the most, you know, the A-plus student either. Uh, Alex appears to be the the A-plus the A guy. I'm going to go with Alex. Uh, playing right. piano is pretty difficult, I I feel like. I feel like that. Too. I'm the only person in my family who can't play piano. Oh, well, damn. <laughs> no, I and I took piano lessons when I was five, and it's the only thing I've quit in my life. Nice. Only thing. Uh, I had ADHD. Uh, I was playing t-ball and Boy Scouts, and my parents were like, "Yeah, he's just he just doesn't <laughs> care about this." Uh, <laughs> like, I'm the only one in my family who does not play an instrument. Only one. My sister can play like eight different instruments. Um, all right, so number six, when one of us, between Alex and myself, when they get drunk and they're feeling emotional, they'll go on YouTube and watch Derek Jeter highlights. Jeez. Emotional and watch Derek Jeter highlights. Who does that? Who, who breaks well, down either. and watches Derek Jeter? <laughs> I mean, there's some people who call their exes. Some people. I mean, I thought you that know, was a heading. Did. You know, the drunk talk or something, or hit you up. No. They no. watch Derek Jeter. Wow. And and both of you are from the area. I mean, I can't see any ties to New York. I mean, pirate fan. Why Jeter? And I can't even count how many times I picked each of you. So I'll, you know, I don't even know the mathematics of that. I'm. I, I guess I'm gonna go. Alex? I'm going to go with Alex. Okay. Nobody should do that, Smitty said. <laughs> Nobody should do it. All right. So we talked about one of our fathers. This could be the same father. This could be a different father. But one of our father's first name is Dana. Hmm. Hmm. He could be Dana the piano tuner. I know. He could be Dana Hiles. He could just be, you know. Dana Stump. Dana Stump. Dana Stump the piano tuner. tuner. Wow. Does that sound right to you? Or is he Dana Hiles? Father of a 40-inch TV. <laughs> a 40-inch <laughs> flat screen owner. <laughs> the pride and joy of the Hiles right there. Yes. Um, I'll tell you what. I am going to go... I'm going to go with you, Noah. Okay. Question number eight. One of us, me or Alex, our favorite drink when we're out is Japanese whiskey. I swear I've seen this conversation. Japanese, Japanese whiskey. I'll tell you what, only because... I'm going to go with Alex. I feel like I've seen this conversation. And I don't recall you. Okay. Number nine. One of us has been to Fenway Park. Who has it been? Ooh. I'll go with you, Noah. Okay. Crushing, you know, the, you're at Fenway Park watching the Red Sox. Alex gets upset and he's going home watching, you know, Derek Jeter highlights. <laughs> there we go. I will say, I will say, I won't tell you if I've been there or not. Um, but I've been to twelve major league baseball stadiums. Oh, cool. My goal is obviously to hit all thirty. Actually, for my birthday, I got a poster. My again, my mom, the best, uh, got me this poster, and it's of every big league team stadium, and it's a scratch off with a coin. You can scratch off the ones that you've been to. Oh, that's cool. So like, there's this that's outline different. of it. Yeah, 
Yeah, and you could scratch it out, and it shows like what the stadium looks like when you scratch it out. It's pretty sick. So I've got 12 down. I plan to go to one more this summer. I don't know where. I'm thinking Toronto. Mm, um, nice. Yeah. What if I was just like, I'm planning to go to Fenway. <laughs> like, I just ruined it. <laughs> Back up. All right, and so my last one. Um, one of us had Keone Kella force us to look at his dick. All right, this is an interesting question. Force. Yep. I mean, based on what you said earlier, that you've seen people's, though it doesn't mean that you've seen his. However, I know you have, so I'm going to go with you, Noah. You, you seen it. I seen it. All right, you ready for your results? Wow. Or do you want me to wait? Um... Let's tell you your results. That way I know how well I need to do. Yeah, yeah. That's the point of it. Right. All right. So number one, keyboard. The keyboard question, you said, Alex, you're 100% right. That dude, I tell him all the time, just get a wireless keyboard. They're $10 on Amazon. (laughs) He will not do it. I don't know why. So you're one for one there. Number two, uh, tackle Jesse James in high school. That was me. I played Jesse James twice in my high school football career. Really? Played in my sophomore year. Yeah, I played in my sophomore year and my junior year. Uh, my sophomore year, I was like a special teams player, but then our our safe, our free safety got hurt, so they put me in like the third quarter. He was a tight end, obviously. And I jumped on his back. He carried me for four yards, and he eventually fell down. He was like my fourth career varsity tackle. Nice. But then my junior year when we faced him, we held him to no catches. It was like a huge deal because like the dude went to the NFL. He's a beast. <laughs> All right, so you're two for two there. Three, biggest fear of horses, that is me. I don't fuck with horses. Oh, wow. Sorry about that. Hey, no, uh, dude. no worries. Uh, but yeah, I not all horses. I mean, most of them I'm scared of. Uh, but I would say my biggest fear is Clydesdales. I just think they're too big. Um, horses kick you in the face. You're dead. They step on your foot. Foot broken. So, uh, so did you have like fingers, interactions with them as you're younger? Is that why? No, I, never, I was never traumatized by horses. They never did okay. anything to me. They're beautiful, majestic creatures. Even today, I drove past some horses on the way to cover a high school baseball game. I thought, damn, those are beautiful animals. I don't know why I'm so scared of these things. But like, if I got close to them, I would, I would piss my pants. Like They are so scary. So the human so finger... Is easier to bite through than a baby carrot. Our brains just won't allow us to do it. You know whose brains would? A horse, because they bite through carrots like nothing. Uh, and uh, the one time I went on a first date with a girl who like rode horses, like they had, she had like a mm. horse farm. She took me to her horse farm. I didn't know where we were going. She's like, "Come on, we're going here." We went to a horse farm, and she didn't know my. She went to a different school. I was like, "Oh shit!" Like I had to play it off like a school. I thought it was badass because I petted a horse. So. <laughs> Three for three so far. Celebrity Crush, Anna Kendrick, that is Alex. You're correct. So, so far, you're four for four. Damn. I thought I bombed this. Alex's dad is a piano tune, tuner. That's his job. So, five for five. I'm, I'm, you're like, right. I'm shocked right now. But that's funny. So Six. I, okay, go ahead. Oh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I mean, that's, that's interesting. The piano tuner, like, that's your job. That is interesting. I mean, it blows my mind every time he talks about it. He'll, like... He'll, we'll be like going around downtown Pittsburgh and you're like, yeah, my dad can tune a piano up there. I'll be like, what does that even mean? dude? <laughs> like that is so cool. Right. All right. So, uh, um, number six gets drunk and watches Derek Jeter highlights. That is me. I am a Derek Jeter fan. I, I mean, he is, I mean, I grew up, you know, as a Pirates fan growing up, like who did I have to cheer for? Jason Kendall, Jason Bay. Like I needed to cheer for someone actually good. I got gotcha. um, and Derek Jeter, I mean, he's a shortstop. Like, I played shortstop when I was little. I mean, he's the American dream, dude. Like, he dated, like, the hottest girls in the world when he was playing. He's you a shortstop. A he won five World Series, 3,000 hits. I mean, the dude was awesome. So, like, yeah, when Noah gets home from the south side and his girlfriend isn't here to, like, you know, cuddle with him and go to sleep and he's feeling sad and lonely, he pulls up YouTube and he watches – and cutting off the throw and throwing out Giambi at the plate, and you see the jump throw, and then when he bats against Evan Meek in his final bat at Yankee Stadium, and he gets the hit, and he goes around first base, and he jumps up with his arms in the air, and he goes, Derek Jeter, where fantasy becomes reality. That's me, dude. I love Derek Jeter. So let me ask you this. So when you come (laughs) home, right, you're drunk, and you watch Derek Jeter, and you wake up the next morning, do you wake up with a gift basket? Like, does that still happen? 
No, no, no. Oh, I, man. Dude, I would gladly take that <laughs> gift basket, though, man. Think of the girls who've had that gift basket. I mean, like... That's, that's prestigious. Like, that is, like... You want to talk about... Like, you dip it in history? bronze that's and you put that row. on your mantle. Like, Halle, Halle Berry, Mariah <laughs> Carey, Hannah... What was her name? The Sports Illustrated model. I mean, all of them, dude. Like, and that's just what that we guy, know. man. Yes, that's what we... Exactly, right? So that was number six. Number seven said, my dad's name is Dana. That is correct. And uh, he's if he's watching this right now, he'll go, well, Dana White leads the USC. Like, that's always his, like, <laughs> fallback. Uh, as do I. Um, number eight, main drink is Japanese whiskey. That's 100% Alex. Because, uh, again, that's just Alex. Like That's just, just so like, weird, weird, too. Like the, I'm telling you, like, something stood out with that. Yeah, 100%. Um, number nine, been to Fenway Park. Alex has been to Fenway Park, not me. So, mm. uh, that's the second one you missed so far. So you're seven of nine. Uh, I've never been to Fenway. Uh, I'd like to, but Alex went when the Pirates opened their season in 2017. Okay, cool. Alex got a credential. So like Alex has been in the press box at Fenway. He's been on the field for a while. His picture on Twitter was actually him on the field at Fenway Park. So, what is it? You know what? I I think I remember that. Yeah, it was like a selfie. So yeah, that was that. That's like yeah. And number ten, Keone Kella made me look at his <laughs> penis. And the story goes, it was after he made his Pirates debut. He came out of the shower. He said, "Yo, anyone gonna interview me after the game?" And I was like, "I, I do. Yeah, I'll I'll do a one on one with you real quick." And he goes. All right, come over here. Let's do it. I got to bounce. My family's here. And I was like, well, uh, I'll let you get dressed. Like, I go over there and like, I'll let you get dressed, put your clothes on. He goes, what, you never seen a dick before? Get over here and ask me these questions. And I was like, I mean, I have seen a dick. I, I don't know what you want. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Like, yes, Mr. Kella. But like, the thing is, like, he didn't even like, I don't know. Like, Cody's a good dude. He was just like, get over here and do this. Let's go. I got stuff to do. So, he, he sounds like the dude you want to be hanging around with. <laughs> no, no, dude. He's he he gets a bad rep for not talking to the media. I don't know why that story got blown out of proportion. Of I've seen him do one one on one interviews with like every beat reporter, and he talked like I just don't think he does anything on camera. That's uh -huh. it. Like he's that he's a good dude, and he's a really good teammate. Like he was the first one to go out there when the when when shit hit the fan against the Reds. I mean, him and Felipe got thrown out of the game because they were working out together, and they just both knew like stuff was gonna pop off, and they ran out there without their jerseys on. Because they were working out, it's but like they knew, they were like watching the game on TV in the in the clubhouse. They're like, "Well, we gotta go get in a fight now." <laughs> and so, like, he's a good teammate, man. I I really like Kella. Nice. So yeah, eight eight out of ten, Donardo. That's pretty good. So that, it looks like I'm gonna be wearing this shirt. Man, all right, all right. Well, no, you touch you. You have a chance. You do. Uh, all right. Yeah, all right. I doubt it. I bet you. I'll be happy if I get five. So. Ryan or Donardo? The very first question. Yes. Drove across the country twice. Um, dude, I'm gonna be so bad at this. <laughs> um, where does Ryan live? He he lives in Newcastle right now, and he's building in Newcastle right now. I'm still gonna go with Ryan. Ryan, all right. Yes. All right. All right. Question two. Traded Barry Bonds and Chuck Knobloch for Lance Berkman and Fernando Vina in 2001 Fantasy Baseball, which was the year Barry Bonds hit 73. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with you. I'm going to go with Donardo. Why me? I just I don't know. I feel like that's one you would wear with pride because it was so bad. <laughs> All right. Question number two. Had open heart. That's number surgery, three. Number three. Which is probably why you're right on question number two. <laughs> question number three. Uh, had open heart surgery. I'm gonna go with you again. Not that like, like you you look like you're in great shape. It's just maybe you had a medical condition i don't know your history you know hip no worries. Can't go hip anywhere. laws do not apply on the show yeah there you go so all right cool so question number four 
played pool against Justin Verlander. That's pretty dope. Um, you got a really good poker face. I'm going to go Ryan. All right. I probably haven't got any of these right. Found pictures of themselves online holding up a sign stating, I'm drunk at Punxsutawney on Groundhog's Day. That's you, Donardo. That's you. All right. Received in school suspension over fantasy baseball in study hall. Mm, I'm going to go Ryan. Cool, cool. Rocked a mullet for a week. And by the way, this was voluntarily, and this person was out of high school. Denardo. One, two, three, four. All right. So if you, you want, okay. okay. All right. Eight questions. We got two more. Three more. Three more. <clears throat> Is not good with numbers. <laughs> you. Oh, All right. I skipped the question. That's why. Okay. Okay. Three more. Stole and all. Okay. So I guess I got to preference this. <clears throat> Do you remember when the All-Star game was in Pittsburgh? Yes. 2006. Do you remember all those like stickers on the sidewalk? Those like for Spock, Fox Vaguely. Sports, All-Star game. I was game. like 10, but yeah, kind of. Okay. Yeah. So this person stole one of those stickers off of a sidewalk. Mm-hmm. I'll go Ryan. All right. This person has attended a World Series game, a Stanley Cup game, and a Super Bowl. I'll go Ryan. And then last question, the one I skipped. Uh, this person finished fifth place in a poker tourney in Vegas. I'll go you, Donardo. My guess, did I get five right? Did I get five right? I feel like I didn't even get five. I'll put it this way. You did solid. So let's go down. Let's go down. We'll give you the answers. And actually, I have some pictures. I know. I don't know if you're on Twitch and can see it, but the people watching. No. Nah. I do have some pictures here. And will this be on YouTube after? Yeah. Or no? Okay. Yeah, we actually have a page on our site, too, that has it. So question number one, drove across the country twice. You are correct. That was Ryan. Uh, some right. insight. So Ryan worked in the Giants and the Tigers minor league systems. That's so what I thought. He drove the Fresno a few times. <clears throat> so there's there's the reasoning. Oh no, actually no, he drove the Fresno once for that. There was another thing that it was the uh, the winter meetings. I think that's what got okay. him the job. That's what it was. Okay. I know where they were at that point. So anyways, oh, San Diego. That's what it was. San Diego thing for the winter meetings which got him the job in Fresno. Okay. Um, traded Barry Bonds and Chuck Knobloch for Lance Berkman and Fernando Vina. Yeah, that that was that was me. That <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go so well. And for about That's a decade, tough, I still never lived that down. That was like so my Barry first Bonds year. And who else? Barry Bonds and Chuck Knobloch. He had the yips, so you got to get rid of him. Can't trust the guy with the yips. See, see, he never hit home runs either. He always Thank had like you. one home run. See, it wasn't that bad of a trade, right? That's back when like <laughs> home runs didn't matter. Your second baseman would be, ha, hit like two seventy nine and have like a home run and seven runs batted in and, and six hundred at bats, and it's like, well, he's a good glove, you know? <laughs> like, right. Well, you know what's funny yeah. about this? So, I mean, I did get Lance Berkman had a really good year. Fernando Vina had a solid year, or whatever. But like, I remember my whole like reasoning behind this. And I was like, well, all Barry Bonds does is hit home runs. Like, I'm not getting these other stats. And if you, so this was Ryan's league. This is the first time I played fantasy baseball, 01. And of course, you understand, this is like the pioneer days of like fantasy baseball. Like, nothing was structured. So every stat yeah. was a category. Like, it was like 20 offensive categories, like 20 like pitching categories. You know, you get like a point for like a win, a shutout, a complete game strike out, you know, for bad. So I was like, all Barry, D Barry Bonds does is walk and hit home runs. So I'm like, I'm not getting any other stats. So I traded Barry Bonds. He goes out and hits the home run record, 73 bombs. <laughs> um, by the way, I didn't win, in case you were wondering. Dude, like... Full disclosure. 
Well, I mean, it's a bold move on you because even before that, like he was like the MVP every year from like 2000 to like 2004. So I don't, I don't, I don't get. Like Alex <laughs> told me, he was like the other day we were in the press box and I almost punched him, like because he was like I got into baseball in '03 and I just feel like I never really appreciated Bonds in his prime. I'm like, bro, that was his prime, like 2000 to like 2007, like the right? dude. Like in his late thirties, he won like five MVPs. Like that, that was definitely nasty. was his prime. Yes, like people think his prime was like mid nineties. Like no, no, like late thirties when he was clearly, you know, getting help. Anyway, right. continue. Right. No, yeah. you're good. So so far, two for two. <laughs> mm-hmm. Question number three: Had open heart surgery. That actually was Ryan. Okay. So there's your first miss. Okay. Finished fifth place in a poker tourney in Vegas. You did get that one right. That was me. However, that's why I kind of threw this in there. I don't know if you knew this. Ryan ha- Ryan was a dealer. He actually worked at the Rivers for some time as well. And oh, the, really? uh, the casino in Cleveland when he lived in Cleveland for a bit. You can't smoke there. You know that? <laughs> really? A lot of people complain about that. I mean, fun fact. Typically, most just, casinos you can. So I, yeah, I guess I, know, I that's get the thing. it. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm not a smoker, but like, I just feel like that's part of it. You know, yeah. it's like saying you can't shoot sunflower seeds at a baseball game. Right, what right. Even I mean, like a you cigar. Know? You know, just smoke yeah, on exactly. a cigar. Well, I just feel like it's not a casino if you don't have some eight year old grandma chain smoking at the slot machine. That you know? too. That too, for sure. Right. All right. So okay. I'm three for four. So next question: Played pool against Justin Verlander. That was Ryan. And okay. actually, that was in Pittsburgh. Oh, Tilted oh, really? kill. Tilted kill. It happened. Oh, He R. was there I. with um, a couple people, and one was a girl. I'm not going to go too, too deep in this, but um, they came Kate over and started talking to the girl. It wasn't Kate Upton. Oh, um, okay. I won't say if he was with or with not Kate Upton at the time, but <laughs> they came over. Uh, Ryan okay. was with her, and they, they played pool. That's dope. Right. Uh, found pictures of themselves online holding a sign, I'm drunk at Punxsutawney. That was me. Um, okay. Here's the picture, if you're wondering. Yeah, so we went to Punxsutawney. We would go there, me and my friends, Ryan too. Ryan was an IUP at the time. So we would drive to IUP, um, drink lots of water, and then go to yeah. Punxsutawney fully hydrated. Well, that's my, – my roommate actually, uh, his freshman year of college, he attended IUP Punxsutawney campus. So – Oh, he okay. knows all about that experience on uh, Groundhog Day. I'm yeah, sure there you go. He's, he's probably had similar pictures taken of himself. My one friend like right swore, like, we got to go to Punxsutawney. We all laughed at him. Like, that sounds so dumb. Why would we do that? He's like, no, you don't understand. You got to go. So we went, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun time. It's really cold, but yeah. So it was like, I want to say eight months later, my other friend like found this picture online. I was like, dude, Donardo, you're out there on the internet. Um, next question. Received in-school suspension over... Fantasy baseball in study hall. That as well as Ryan. So again, I told you you're doing you're doing pretty well, man. Am I five for six? Yes. All right. Rocked a mullet for a week. Yes, that was me. Okay. Story behind that. I let my hair grow really, really long. Now, as you know, I live in Jacksonville now. So this you was, fit right in. This <laughs> absolutely. So my now wife, at the time girlfriend, lived in Jacksonville first. I was still back in Newcastle, and I was mm-hmm. growing my hair really long. And I told her, well, I mean, I was coming down to visit her. So what I did is I sent her a picture of me. It's like, you know, hey, whatever, I'll see you, you know, ne- tomorrow, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. No, actually, it was the next week. It was the week before. So I said, you know, see you next week, whatever. That night mm-hmm. I went to the barber, and I said, give me a mullet. And they looked at me, and like, wait, how do I do that? <laughs> I mean, think about it, you know, like who's actually cut a mullet. So I had to like kind of describe like what I wanted. I got a mullet, went down there. As soon as I got off the plane, she saw it, went straight to Walgreens, I think, bought clippers and she shaved my head. She was not having that. There you go. The, see, I do the same thing with a mustache for my girlfriend. I mean, she's still in school again. She's in Ohio. Uh-huh. So like we, you know, we have that like long, can't wait to see her or whatever. But like, I'll be like, just shaved and I'll like have like a thick ass <laughs> mustache. You get sure. So pissed. Yeah. And it was great because, I mean, I came down with a hat. So, like, you, you had no idea. Just still mm-hmm. long hair. You know, she took off my hat. She put it back on, took it off again. She's like, uh-uh. No, this is getting off. We're cutting this. 
There you go. So got that one right. Stole an all-star sticker for Pittsburgh. From Pittsburgh for the all-star game. That was me. So also the story behind that was, again, moving down to Jacksonville. I moved that week. So my last oh. night out, I went down to Pittsburgh that week. He had to. Oh, for sure. For sure. I was like, you know what? I'm taking one. So I, I mean, it was actually, I think it was on the Clemente Bridge that we did it for. Yeah. You had no choice. So, you know, it was, I think we we're at a game at the time where we we're just in Pittsburgh, but I'm walking, I'm looking around, looking around, and we just rolled it up and just kind of rolled a ball, went to the car, put it in the trunk, and that was it. Didn't get caught. So what am I at right now? We're through eight. Uh, I think you've missed two. two. So I'm six for eight. Okay. Yep. So these last two determine who wins. Attended a World Series, Stanley Cup, and Super Bowl game. That as well was Ryan. Okay. Um, so it comes out of this last one. Which is crazy. So what did I skip? Uh, geez, no, remember. that is ten. No, but you you skipped like number eight, I think, or seven. Mullet, All Star Game, World Series, in school suspension, Groundhog no, I don't think Day. You did, it. did you say in school suspension? I never. You don't. I don't think you said in school suspension on the oh, review. Okay, okay. I probably okay. So received in school suspension. That was Ryan. That was our senior year, the year that I you know traded bonds. Uh, we were in the same study hall together at the library, and he was. I like, think I said. I think I said Ryan. For that you one. did. You did. So we tied. So we are tied. So as as horrible as you thought you did, same here. Wow. We're tied. So what the hell happens? I didn't. I don't know. I think we just gotta make Alex eat the cone. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on. Ryan eats the cone. <laughs> Alex wears the shirt. Okay. Is that the deal? Uh, I don't know. I mean, well, Francisco Liriano <laughs> just got a hit, by the way. How That's about, why he needs uh, to be in the game. How about we just have a rematch? You know, we'll, okay. I'll come back on sometime and we'll do it again. That sounds like a plan. Or Alex and I will both come back on and we'll do it again. We'll, we'll make sure we have a tiebreaker just in case. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hey, Noah, I really appreciate you coming on. This is really fun. Thank Absolutely. you once again. We'll definitely do this uh, sometime soon. And uh, any last any last words you want to say? No, nah, man. Thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun. I hope everyone uh, listening in um, doesn't unfollow me on Twitter after this. Uh, I hope I wasn't insufferable to your fan base. Uh, but I really appreciate it giving me the opportunity to talk about baseball, about everything going on here. This was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Well, thanks again. We'll see you all next mm -hmm. time. Bye-bye. <laughs>